So this video is geared toward my audience that does not have access to McMaster Car or that live outside the United States. Today we're going to be replicating a PVC-Y, which is used in homemade hopper assemblies. We need a half inch PVC coupler, 45 degree elbow, and a one inch PVC pipe section. To start, we're just going to sand off some of the embossments that we see uh, on this elbow here. We want to make that as smooth as possible. We want this to be close to a, a cylinder. Next, we're going to just sand off any burrs that we see. And I also had this seam on mine, and I just scraped that off with the back of my knife and then smoothed it out with sandpaper afterwards. Again, we want this as close to a perfect cylinder as we can. Next, we're going to prepare the one inch PVC pipe section by cutting out roughly one third of it. We're basically making a PVC half pipe. Now, sand down any of the sharp edges or any of the burrs that you see there. We want this nice and smooth for when we grip it with our hand if we go to grab that. Next, just give everything a test fit. And wow, those pieces plug right in. Let's try it the other way, so we're replicating our Y. And this is more what we're going for. So to make that half inch PVC coupler fit into that 45, we need to take a little bit of material off of it. I noticed that mine was a little bit wider at one end than the other, so I just sanded off that other, that other end there. It's not that big of a deal, but it was bugging me, so I want it to be as close to a perfect cylinder as I possibly could get it. To make these plug in, we need to cut off roughly 45 degrees from our half inch coupler. So I just made a mark at the center line and continued that around the circumference. This is so I didn't saw into the internal ridge which uh, PVC pipes jut against. And we're going to need that for when we put in our, our PVC stub. So here I'm just making a V shape. When we cut this out, it's going to look like a cross between a V and a parabola. So I'm just going to saw out that V and then work from there. Now, see where this is making contact. We're going to need to saw and file away a lot of this. So I'm just going to flatten that out with my file and make that nice and flat. And then we're going to constantly adjust this. Check it out, make sure that everything is nice in line and concentric. And if it's not, just quickly fix it up with your file. Next, take your rat tail file, and this is the most important part, but make sure that everything mates together as closely together as you possibly can. Now we're going to take the 45 degree elbow, I'm going to select that side as the front side, and we're going to mark where our internal ridge is on the top side, so to speak. And I'm just going to draw that around and continue that around the circumference. Double check, always measure twice, cut once. And then we're just going to continue that down and continue a line uh, straight downward. We're going to make basically a mouth for our air to flow through. I'm going to continue that all the way to the to the other end. And then we're going to nice and gently cut that part out. I'm going to plug that into my vise, and we're going to drill that out. I'm using first a small drill bit, and then I'm going to step it up to a bigger one, a 3 8 inch drill bit. Because we are working with a rounded surface and a large drill bit, that's just to make sure that the part doesn't slip. But always make sure that you have it in your vise nice and tightly, or this might happen. So when we have that in tightly, finish drilling that out, and then we're going to go back to our best friend, the rat tail file. We are going to file away at the sides of that mouth and get it as wide as we can. We want as much airflow as we can possibly get through this 45 degree uh, elbow. Next, yeah, everything should fit in pretty well into our, our half inch uh, or one inch half pipe. And then we're going to use some epoxy to hold everything together. Use a good amount. I ended up using about uh, a third of this whole container here. Mix that together really well. You need good uh, dispersion of your epoxy if you want that stuff to work well. And once you have that, we are going to take some and smear as much of that as we can get onto the inside of your PVC half pipe. Make sure it is full coverage go more rather than less and you can always wipe some off later you can't add more once it's dried so make sure that, that there's a whole film on the entire surface next plug in your coupler and make sure that's in there nice and uh, nice and straight add some more right to the front because that's right where our uh, 45 degree elbow mouth is going to be and that's basically the biggest opening that we have in this thing plug in your elbow make sure the correct sides facing up and then push everything together and then we're going to apply some epoxy to the sides. 
that is the next biggest part where we're going to lose air. The epoxy is going to plug up all of those air holes, and don't forget that bit on top too. If you see that there's more of a gap, make sure that's pushed together nice and tightly, and get it on the sides too. You want to use a generous amount of epoxy, and here you see I'm getting that little top opening there, and make sure none falls into the into the pipe uh, slots themselves, or the pipe openings themselves, because we are going to be plugging half inch PVC pipe into that. But if some falls in, it's not a big deal. You can just remove some with your finger or with a um, or the paper towel. This is kind of the most important part, so that's why I'm not really cutting it out. This is critical to having a good Y. Now that we're good, we've let it rest for about three hours, and this is the result. I'm going to sand off the outside layer of epoxy just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Not necessary, but it's just a step at professionalism, I suppose. We're going to plug in some half inch PVC pipe, make sure it's in there nice and tight, and then we're going to leave about three quarters inch to one inch exposed at the other side. That's going to be what plugs into our blaster itself. And then we're just going to drill and sink a screw into there. Now this does twofold. This makes sure that your stub isn't going to fall out, but it also makes sure that the Y is nice and uh, nice and strong. Here's my barrel, and that's just half inch CPVC with PVC. Whatever barrel material you're using is fine. I'm going to make the hopper itself with just some half inch PVC and a half inch PVC ball valve. Plug that in. And the last step is to secure your barrel. Now I'm going to go through the outer layer of one half uh, PVC pipe, but I'm going to leave the CPVC undisturbed. We do not want a hole in the barrel where the uh, where the dart's going to go through it. So let's load this up. I'm using a multitude of darts with beige foam, blue foam, and gray foam. Uh, even white foam worked with this shockingly. The only ones that didn't work were ones that wouldn't work because of my barrel. It had nothing to do with this Y. But let's give this a shot. And it, again, it works surprisingly well. I'm very happy with how this turned out. I think I'm going to be making a few more of these. That last one was a dry fire. But anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope this was helpful to people that did not have access to, uh, to Ys. Next objective, one start.